and we're back after a little quick brief break. So here we are. Now we're going to be continuing on with the sixth um, join for the Aquarius that we're going to be practicing, and we've got about two more two minutes. Uh, sorry, two more minutes to go. Uh, sorry, two more Aquarius to go after this. So let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and scroll up. Um, we're going to go ahead and clear this guy out from the previous query, and let's move on to this. Here we are. Um, So provide the name for each um provide the name for each region in your in every order as well as the account name and as well as if um the unit price that they paid. However, you should only provide the results if the standard amount exceeds a hundred, also amount exceeds but I only did this, didn't I? So let's see what the difference between that and that is. Uh uh, okay, so I'll sort by the smallest, sort by the, okay, so the difference is basically just in the sorting. So last time we sorted by the lar uh, smallest, and we're just going to be sorted by the largest. So I think um, I could easily um, just um, copy and save this and just change that order, I'm assuming. And descending. I think of it, I shouldn't have taken out the query in here. That's okay. It's going to compare the query with that one. That's number six. So pretty much everything is the same. The four joints, joint sales region account and orders, and then just the wares, which is standard quantity above 50 and the postal quantity above 50, sorry, 150. And then the order is going to be the descending, which is going to give us the largest first, and it's going to go all the way down to the smallest. Oh, okay, here we are. Oh, okay. Did I not change the issue that we had earlier? Hmm. Okay. Didn't appear that I have that in there, but weird. Okay. Just trying to check here. That's right. Okay, so let's see. There. Did I not delete? The other one? Okay, I did not delete the other one. So, that. Okay. Wow, I'm really not looking at what I'm doing here. Sorry about that. Yeah, so now we have the highest unit price, and it's going to descend. Perfect. Let me go ahead and uh, select all now. Constantly delete it. Now let's move on to the. Oops. So, okay, that's. That's why I shifted it. Okay, so what are the two. Okay, that seems like a fun query. It's going to be if I had a different structure, so we're definitely. I haven't got. I definitely have gotten used to the questions structure. So it looks easier, but now it's going to be different. Um, so, what are the different. So, what are the different. Channels used by, uh, used by account ID. Your final table should only have two columns: account name and the different ch and the channels. Interest. You can try select distinct to narrow down the results to only unique value. Okay. So, where the different channels used by the diff uh, the user ID? Okay. Sorry, it's by the account ID one o o one. Um. Different channels used by interesting. So it's not good. so there could be possibilities that a single account is using multiple of the same channels. So in this case, we just want to show a unique one of those. So I'm assuming I feel like some, it's going to look something like so. We're going to go ahead and first uh, combine these two uh, using account ID and an account uh, account IDs and the web 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 events dot account underscore ID, and then from there on, then we are going to do. Then we are gonna do then we can do a conditional where the account um where the account ID is only for one oh oh one and then in the column we can selectively show the channel names. Let's see. I wanna I actually want to see this query build up build up. So let's go ahead and do accounts set of an alias join web events. No, alias, I'm terrible. I find the easiest thing to represent for alias. It just works out for me. Um, on, let's do, oops. 
um, on a dot ID equals w dot count ID. Now we want to see all the um, account, um, pretty much all the information only associated to account ID number 1001. So where we can do, so now I can technically use where or and, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to stick with where because it's more visibly distinct, distinguishable, I don't know. Um, okay, so where a dot ID equals 1001 and select um, a dot ID and distinct and distinct w dot channel Right. Let me see that's going to show here. Hmm. Check out the where they covered that part. At the same time, I also want to check out the solutions to see. If you can try selecting no to only the unique values, maybe unique values. Yeah, because in this case, what I was doing earlier was, okay, I don't want to base my prediction standing based off solution, but in this, um, I see what it's trying to do because it's going to show the actually doesn't make sense because let's say in terms of column and looking at records, we have the record where the account ID is 1001. Then it's looking for the distinct um, value in the channel. The channel only contains one single value, so therefore that makes sense. But now if I just go ahead and do Interesting. That was quite the. That was quite. That's kind of a little curve for me. Got a net. Wonder if there is any like search. Distinct, distinct, distinct. Statement then provides the unique rows for all columns. Okay. Wait, wait. wait. Things always used in select statements, and it provides the unique rows for all columns written in the in the select state. Distinct is always used in the select statement. It provides a unique value for all columns written in the Okay, so there it is. Provides unique rows for all columns unique rows all columns so right like that which would return the unique value uh, rows across all three columns you sure you would not write what I was trying to do you can think of distinct as making a um, think of the statement unique it's worth noting that using distinct particularly in aggregation can slow your queries down quite a bit interesting note to keep in mind okay that's that 